And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you all this evening as we celebrate together this wonderful sacrament of holy matrimony between Andrew uh, and Emily. Certainly welcome uh, Father John Keeler and Father Kunsu Lee, who have joined, uh, joined me in this beautiful uh, gift that God has given them. So during the ceremony, I invite you to just be praying for them as they begin this new journey um, as husband and wife very soon. So Andrew and Emily, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you. Together with your families and your friends, as today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill every one of your prayers. And let us pray. O oh God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in the bond of inseparable love these your servants, Emily and Andrew, who are here to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, for your, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This time you may be seated, and I invite our wedding party to be seated as well.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as the church is just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her sanctification, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes it and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Father loves me, so I also will love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus for one another, He wants you both to experience joy in your life. Right? And you've experienced all these emotions tonight, I know, the excitement, right, and, the, and the, the happiness. He wants that to be continued in your life, that joy, that experience of joy. 
In the Gospel today, it's from John chapter 15. Jesus speaks about this kind of joy. And I'll read you again what he says. He says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Well, how did our Lord love us? It wasn't just a feeling that came up in his heart one day, and he says, well, I love you because I feel good in your presence. But how did he love us? He made an act of his will where he laid down his life for each one of us. He gave himself as a gift to each one of us. He essentially said, I do to you, and I'll be present to you. By the beginning of this act on the cross, I'm essentially sealing my love for you. So remain in the love of Christ and reflect that love to one another. That's essentially what you do when you exchange your vows and you say, I do. There's a certain dying to oneself for, the, for another, right? But there's a dying to oneself for a greater good. And again, that's the love of marriage. And that's where your joy will be. As I mentioned, you know, the sacrament is a great gift. You guys are a gift to one another. And one of the things that I ask couples to do um, during their prep is to write just a letter uh, to one another, right, about their love. So you can see where I'm going with this now, to express that love. So both Emily and Andrew wrote letters to one another at the end of their preparation with their mentor couple, um, and they haven't read it to one another. So this is going to be the evening they're going to get a chance to read it and share that love with all of you, right? Because the sacrament of marriage is not just for Emily and for Andrew, but it's for the church. This is why we're here. It's a gift not just to them and their future children and their family, but for all of us. And so I thought maybe I'd read a little bit of their letters with you all and to see how their love matured over the years and how it will continue to mature if Christ is always kept at the center of your relationship. Now, I was reading these, both of these letters today, um, and it was really hard for me to decide who was going to go first, right, with the letters. Um, but I decided that I would read Emily's letter to Andrew first, right? So this is a little bit of their love shared with all of us. My dearest Andrew, I am supposed to even begin expressing my love for you in a single letter. As I'm sitting here trying to write this letter, I'm truly speechless, probably for the first time in my life. I'm speechless because, quite frankly, there's no words that could adequately express to you the love I have for you. No matter the words I put down, I'm afraid they won't do justice or even scratch the surface of my love for you but I'll try. We started dating at such a young age, and no one actually thought anything of our relationship until a few years later, except for God. He knew. But I knew from the beginning it was you I was meant to be with. Not once had the idea of not being with you crossed my mind. I've had the privilege of going through many stages of life with you, from those awkward beginnings of teenage years to learning how to drive a car to graduating from high school and then tackling the challenge that is college, we have done it all together. We have seen each other change immensely over the years and have helped each other grow so much. I have gotten to witness you growing from that awkward, shy, little 14-year-old <laughs> into a handsome, smart, funny, and most importantly, caring young man, who I am so proud to call mine. This is something most couples don't have the luxury of. We have literally grown up together, gone through many stages of life together. Think back on all the memories we have together. The Tickfall visits, dates to see the Avengers, even though I really don't like those movies much. Coffee at Highland Road Park, 
spontaneous trips to get ice cream late at night, and the list can go on and on. We've never had to do any, we have never had to be doing anything extravagant so long as we were together. And what other girl gets to say they have multiple piano songs written just for them? How special I am. Although we are physically the same people, we are actually two very different people from when we began dating. We have changed and matured together over the years, and that is what has given us such a strong bond that will never be broken. The fact that we have fought through these changes and huge life adjustments speaks volumes for our love and the commitment to each other. There have been countless times I have realized that I love you throughout our relationship. I still very vividly remember the first time you held my hand and the first time you kissed me. I, will, I was filled with butterflies and chills. You brought, back those, you brought back those same chills and butterflies many times throughout our relationship. And I promise you that they will never get old. I still feel that shy little 15-year-old girl coming out at times when you look into my eyes. And I can guarantee that I will get the same feeling the most I, have ever, I ever have today when I finally get to look into your eyes and know that you are mine forever. Now, how do I even begin to tell you how much I love you? This seems like an insurmountable task. As I'm writing this letter, I took a break to clear my thoughts for a minute and opened Facebook. I proceeded to read a story of a woman had posted about losing her husband. In that moment, I realized that I never want to be in the situation of the woman who was writing the post. She explained how she took her relationship for granted and never actually fully, truly expressed to her husband how much she loved him. I know I'm not perfect, and I don't pretend to think our relationship won't have its ups and downs, but I'm here to promise you that I will fight day in and day out for us and will spend the rest of my life trying to show you just how much you mean to me. There's one thing I know I will never regret in this life, and that is dedicating my life to you, building a family with you, and showing you the love I have for you. Truly have, truly have the luxury of never having to wonder if or why you love me, because you make me very clear each and every day that you do love me and that we are meant for each other. I promise I will spend the rest of my life trying to make you feel the same love and security that you have let me feel. Now, here we are on our wedding day, 2,435 days since we first started dating. So nobody's counting, though. <laughs> we made it. And I can't be more excited to begin this new life together. This is the day we have waited for, for what seems like an eternity. There are so many different emotions I wish I could articulate to you right now. I'm overjoyed. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. I'm nervous. What if I trip down the aisle? Well, we got past that, Emily. <laughs> Nostalgic thinking about how far we've come. Have I mentioned I'm excited? I love you so much, and I want you to realize that I will spend the rest of my life by your side, fighting all the battles that you will fight and celebrating all the victories that you will celebrate. Today, I'm giving myself fully to you, I promise that I will live my life loving you, helping you live your life to the fullest, comforting you when you struggle and lifting up you when you're thriving. I will cherish your love and comfort for the rest of my life. There's, there is no one else on this earth that I would rather spend my life with. You are my best friend forever and always. And finally, I know this letter doesn't show my full love for you, but I hope it helps you to understand just how special you are to me and just how much I love you. I, though I know this letter won't scratch the surface of my love for you. I promise I will spend the rest of my life adding to this letter and trying to show you just how much I love you and just how special you are.
forever and always, Emily. Very nice. You can wipe the tears from your face, Andrew. <laughs> so, beautiful. Thank you. This was a letter from Andrew to Emily, and she hasn't read it either. Um, his was a little bit longer, so I, knowing that this is going to be a little long, lengthy of a homily, I had to cut some things out. So, Emily, you got to go back and read the whole thing, okay? But I got to tell you, Andrew, man, this is good stuff. When I was, I was about to cry when I was reading this. So, Anytime you find yourself in the doghouse, you just pull this letter out, okay? Have her read it, all right? Because this is good, man. So here we go. My dearest Emily, I have now loved you for 2,435 days. Again, who's counting? <laughs> we have come so far and both grown so much since we were just one of those awkward 14-year-old high school sweethearts, a relationship that nobody think would have lasted. Well, we prove that theory wrong. Amen. So where to begin? I think I'll take us back in the past and remember our life together up until this point. November 2011. Growing up, our homeschool group always went to Tickfall State Park for an annual campout. It was the highlight of our year, from playing football to walking the river trail to riding bikes and talking on the walkie-talkies. However, this tick fall did become the best weekend of my life. Notice that line, because it'll come up a lot. The best weekend. It was the first time I got to be around you and get to know you. I knew from the moment I saw those big, beautiful blue eyes that I loved you. As the weekend went on, I got your phone number by accident. Yeah, right. By accident. Me and Jacob prank called you and Amy, so I got your number thinking it was Amy's number. You texted me and wished me a happy Thanksgiving, and I assumed it was Amy until further into the conversation I figured out it was, it was you. I was quite happy to find out that it was you. No coincidences with God. Christmas 2011, we began talking to each other more frequently, and finally, by Christmas and New Year's, I told you that I liked you over text. Yes, so it's the 21st century. I know. As time went on, we began to hang out together as our friend group. We never really acknowledged that we had said that we liked one another until the evening of May 4th, 2012. Again, nobody's paying attention to the dates. <laughs> May 4th, 2012. We were with our friends at the Rave Movie Theater at the mall, seeing the premiere showing of the first Avengers movie, even though Emily did not like it. I had made up my mind that this was the day that I would ask you to be my girlfriend, and that would hold your hand during the movie. So this was Andrew's plot. He was going to hold her hand. The Avengers movie is a two-hour movie and 23 minutes long, it took me all but the last five to ten minutes of the movie to work up the nerve to hold your hand. I probably attempted to hold your hand ten times before I actually committed. <laughs> so this was the best day of my life. November 2012. After the summer was over and it was time for school to begin, we had really gotten very close to one another. Before we knew it, it was time for our tick fall camp out. We had not had our first kiss yet. I knew that there was no better place than to have it happen there. So there's Andrew plotting again. <laughs> After waiting all day on Friday, we finally found ourselves alone. We were on the boardwalk. It was around 1030 at night, and we, we were without our friends doing the boardwalk in the dark like always. Everyone always decided to split up and hide along the boardwalk to scare others, so obviously we paired up and hid together. I just remember it being freezing outside, but we were just holding each other. It finally happened. We had our first kiss. Only a short time later, we were interrupted by Jonathan yelling that the parents were trying to find everyone because everyone's curfew was at 11. This was definitely the best day of my life. The tick fall way out, outscored the previous. 
We had an amazing time up until Saturday night after Mass. You felt sick and passed out at Mass and disappeared afterwards. I ran back to the cabins to try and find you, but you were nowhere to be seen. Finally, I saw your dad carrying you into Mr. Ricky's truck, and then they flew out of the, ca of the campground. Paige told me that she thought you were dying. I freaked out and just went walking. I have to admit, I cried. I had no idea what was going on. Luckily, Patrick found me and confront, conf comforted me, and I didn't hear anything until midnight. You called me and said that you were okay and back at the cabin. You had the flu. The next morning when it was time to go, I tried to come and tell you goodbye, but you were driving away as I got there. So that weekend was both the best and one of the scariest weekends of my life. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. One of the things, Emily, that I love and admire most about you is that you always put others first. You have always done everything possible to make me happy and always think of me with every decision you make. I hope that you can do for you, for you half, I hope I can do for you half of what you have done for me. For my 18th birthday and graduation gift, my parents wanted to get me a baby grand piano. We looked forever for the right piano and finally found one that looked so good to be true. You came with me to look at it and we both loved it. After all, I knew that one day it would be yours too. So you had to be there to pick it out with me. With both, we both played it and decided that it was the one. My house, in August, my house took on water and the baby grand was lost. I was devastated about this. I love this piano. It took it, you took it upon yourself to take and compile my original compositions and sell CDs to the parishioners at St. Anne, St. Anthony, and Holy Rosary, and also to local neighborhoods throughout the next, through the next door app. You raised $5,000 and bought me a new piano that was even better than the one I had before. You spent so much time and effort and didn't give up until we had enough. We looked for the pianos for a while and finally we found one. We made a trip down into New Orleans and looked at the beautiful shiny black Kohler and Cam Campbell. I hope I'm saying that right, probably not. Baby Grand, it was the one. This was the greatest day of my life. A lot of great days for Andrew. November 2017, you've been begging to do something fun. I think we let the stress of college and the busyness of life get in the way, and we finally hadn't had a spontaneous trip anywhere like we always do. At this point, I had your engagement ring for several weeks and had already had the talk with your dad and had been planning on proposing very soon. So there's Andrew plotting again. I just needed the right opportunity and you gave it to me with wanting to do something fun. I pretended like I didn't want to do anything when all along I was planning on going back to Tickfall where it all began. Finally, the night before, I told you that we would go do something fun and we went to Tickfall. Whenever we got there, we did the long river trail like we used to do in the high school. At the end of the trail, we were standing looking over the Golden Gate Bridge, overlooking the Tickfall River, and I whispered in your ear, Emily, I'm going to ask you a question. I got down on one knee and asked you to marry me. That was the best day of my life. <laughs> Since being engaged, we have had a lot of fun planning our wedding and honeymoon. And all of that good stuff, on August 31st, 2018, we bought our first house. We have been enjoying painting and renovating it together, so that has kept us busy. On November 9th, we had our piano moved in, and it now feels completely like our home, and I can't wait until after the wedding when we move in and can come home and start our little family as Mr. and Mrs. McAllister. I can't wait until we can say our little good night that we say every night to each other, and then fall asleep in each other's arms. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Beat them up, hit them with a shoe. Bed bugs, I don't wanna sleep with you. 
From our store, you can see that all my best days have been spent with you, Emily. There are many moments not mentioned here because there are too many to mention. Each and every day spent with you is the best day of my life. The past six and a half years have been the best years of my life, and I can't think of anyone I would rather spend the rest of my life with. And I can't wait to see what the future will bring, bring both of us, and know for a fact that January 4th, 2019 will be the best day of my life. Love, Andrew, forever and always. Amen. Well, why don't we get this show on the road then? This is the best day of your life, right? <laughs> so I invite you to come forward as you begin this journey as husband and wife, and I'll invite our wedding party to come forward as we witness the vows and the love of Andrew and Emily. So dearly beloved, you've come together in this church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Andrew and Emily, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? And finally, are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God, to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, I've asked you to turn to one another, join your right hands, and declare your consent before God and His church. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Take you, Emily. Take you, Emily. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. Take you, Andrew. Take you, Andrew. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. And what God joins together, let no one put asunder. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings which you have given to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. Emily. Emily. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit.
Andrew, receive this ring. Andrew, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And, and of the, the Son. Son. And of, and of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. I invite our congregation to please stand. As we witness uh, the vows of Emily and Andrew, and as we listen to God's word, let us turn to God our Father with our petitions and our prayers this evening. Our response is, Lord, you are up for it. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this cup, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another to stay in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for all lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families, we have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the repose of the souls of Mary of Sibyl, Mr. and Mrs. Maurice Joseph Fane, Fane, and Vivian Ruth McAllister, Linda Parton McAllister, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to send your blessing upon us this evening as we entrust to you Emily and Andrew as they begin this journey together as husband and wife. We ask you to hear these petitions as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue in our holy liturgy. You okay? You feel okay? You feel okay? Good. So you guys are husband and wife right now. That's kind of cool, huh?
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Show favor to our supplication, O Lord, and receive with kindly countenance the oblations we offer for these your servants. Join now in a holy covenant that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for one another and for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that the human race, created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such a high dignity that in the union of husband and wife you might bestow a true image of your love. For those you created out of charity, you call to the law of charity without ceasing, and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so the sacrament of holy matrimony, as the abiding sign of your own love, consecrates the love of man and wife through, through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Emily and Andrew, whom you have brought to their wedding day this evening, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This time I invite Emily and Andrew to please kneel for a special nuptial blessing which follows the Our Father. It's a special blessing that I will give over them, asking the Holy Spirit um, to bless their new marriage and new family together. It's connected to the Eucharist um, because of that connection with the sacrifice of the Mass and the sacrifice that one another show um, in the sacrament of marriage. Let us humbly invoke by our prayers, dear brothers and sisters, God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, you created man and woman in your own image and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for these, your servants, Emily and Andrew, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May you abundantly bless, Lord. May your abundant blessings, Lord, come down upon this bride, Emily, and upon Andrew, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may, be adorned, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, with your will 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This time is a very sacred time in which Catholics receive uh, the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Those of you who are unable to receive are those who have joined us from another faith denomination. We welcome you and we thank you for being here as we celebrate um, Emily and Andrew in the sacrament of marriage. You're welcome to come forward if you would like to just cross your arms like so to receive a blessing, um, or you're invited to just remain in your pew and to be in union with us in prayer with us this evening.
Usually, towards the end of a Catholic uh, wedding, I invite the couples to uh, consecrate themselves and seek the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, for their new family together. And so at this time, I invite Andrew uh, to escort his new wife uh, to the statue of Our Lady. each one of these prayers. 
May God the Eternal Father keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in your home and abide always in your house. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. And finally, may you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the first time in all of human history, I'd like to, in, uh, to uh, introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Andrew McAllister. <laughs> <laughs>